Buckeyes start off with the service error. One thing to note is, yes, maybe Buckeyes have dominated the last three or four games, but these are completely different teams than what we've seen even from last season. A lot of turnover on both rosters. Nebraska in the home whites and the scarlet the red of Ohio State on the road. They run the quick middle. Rodriguez gets the up. Murray goes deep corner and finds it. One thing Coach Cook talked about in Servant Pass today was really working the edges of the court. Ohio State's defense plays pretty shallow inside. They don't get all the way out to those sidelines. The edges are wide open for Nebraska to hit. Harper Murray, outstanding freshman. She's hitting 318, 3.23 kills per set. She has been terrific in her freshman year. And there's the Nebraska defense again, Emily. And the block on the right side, the solo by Beeson. Defense is the name of the game for Nebraska after an incredible up for Laney Choboy in the back row, who then didn't play the last game against Kentucky. She's back and better than ever. Mayor Beeson up front setting up a massive stuff. Emily Londot has made a career facing Nebraska. She, as we said earlier, averages nearly four kills per set. They have her on the left side, Emily. They need her in those out-of-system swings. She got one there, but Nebraska sent the message earlier. Jeff Van Oldenburg said, we need our best hitter on the outside. Last season, they had people that could hold it down with Emily Londot playing opposite as Riley Rader puts that one down. But Londot, they had to move her to the outside this season. They needed the production taking those big out-of-system swings. Hey, there is Jen Flynn Oldenburg. Nine seasons as an assistant at the Illini, with the Illini. This her fourth year on the Buckeye bench, leading her alma mater. From the left pin, Merritt Beeson with the angle. Beeson can do it all, whether she's on the right side or the outside, finding angles to work with on the court. That one going so sharp inside. Gatorade National Player of the Year as a senior in high school. There is Harper Murray. Running out to the pin, it goes line and it's in, and a great shot down the line by Emily Londa. John Cook. The Dean of Big Ten Coaches, 24th year at Nebraska, 30th year overall, including the years as the head coach at Wisconsin before coming to Nebraska back in 99 as an assistant and taking over in 2000. And the block goes right back into the arm of Chelsea Thorpe. One thing Jen Flynn Oldenburg said they had to do against this Husker block was be as explosive and aggressive as possible. They're not going to win tipping balls over to the middle of the court. Lexi Rodriguez has all of those covered. They have to continue to take big swings out of system, even if that results in a few stuffs. She's been really pleased with the freshmen who aren't afraid to take big swings. A lot of times freshmen come in, see the big block, they start getting tippy. She's been really impressed that these freshmen are not afraid to take swings. Her biggest message to the freshmen has been you have to stay aggressive, even against that great Husker block we're seeing play out already this game. Ohio State has to continue to test the block, but test the edges a bit better. This ball going right into the hands of Ali Batenhorst. Mia Tuman pulled that back in. Might have been out, but that is chalked up as the third block already for Nebraska. Three blocks through eight sets, eight points so far. That's what this Nebraska defense can do. Swing from that left pin, not the court. Good dig in the back row. The run Londot who goes cross court, got the tip and the kill. Beautiful swing by Emily Londot on the right side this time, where she's more comfortable as a hitter. She takes this ball to her right, finishes her arm down the left to hit a good cut shot. Second team, ABC All-American, first team, Big Ten. <laughs> tip there, pulled out of the net. Back to Batenhorst they go, off the block that time. The tool for Batenhorst. Allie Batenhorst has stepped into this role so well. She hadn't played much this season until that game against Kentucky as Lindsey Krause was out. She went in and absolutely dominated. It's difficult to do when you don't get a lot of playing time. Going back to that six rotation outside, she's done a beautiful job. Merritt Beeson to serve. 
Tough serve for Beeson, and she gets the ace. She really does it in all six rotations. Amara well, Beeson can do it all, whether it's defensively, offensively, from the service line. Her entire game is elite. We'll only say this one, but she's back to the ponytail again tonight. She's back. Like, Coach Coach <laughs> made, a, made a point of talking about the hair. She said she's let her hair down and has done a lot of other things, including racking up aces for this Nebraska team. Off the tape and down. Back-to-back -back aces for Beeson. Ohio State struggling to find a good pass right away. They're out of system, out of high clip, and already a few aces on the Husker side. This one, just a little bit lucky for Nebraska. <laughs> He's, of course, the transfer out of Florida. Or it's before, but he's out of Florida this week, huh? Uh, Alexis Stuckey, their All-American setter, a star in the game, and such a good person. Tore ACL, MCL is going to be out for the season after she went down in that game against Wisconsin. Just yeah. thoughts, prayers, sending love to her. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a good start here in Lincoln for the hometown Huskers. They are up 10-3 and on a 4-0 run. It was a good week for a couple of Huskers in weekly honors. Massive week, and not only just getting these honors, taking down two ranked opponents, one of them being number five, Stanford, and Kentucky as well. Merritt Bees and Harper Murray stepping up so well for this team. Being consistent, it's so difficult early on in the season. You're not playing as top tier of opponents, but they haven't leveled out their game playing the top as teams. That Stanford win on the road is to see the hitting error. Stanford win on the road really opened some eyes. I think of how talented, despite being young, this Nebraska team is. Nebraska might be a very young team, but I talked to Coach Cook earlier and he told me, we talk about how we're young, but we also talk about the number 137, being 137 years of volleyball experience between all the players on the floor. That's a lot of years, so yes, this team might be young, but they can read the game like that. Allie Bainhorst again stepping up for this team. 6-0 Nebraska run, fourth block here in the first. Allie Bainhorst elevating her game, making sure to get those hands so far over the net, suffocating Ohio State. a little tight, pushed over, and down. Good tip there on the kill by Murphy. Lauren Murphy, the freshman with the kill. Normally those tips don't fall on Nebraska's side. Lauren Murphy just testing it out, seeing if they're going to pick it up that time, going in a perfect spot right between all the defenders. Murphy, one of those that Jen Flynn Oldenburg called out and said she's not afraid to take the big rip. There, the tip was very effective. Second touch, not down by Riley. Falls on Nebraska's side point for the Buckeyes. Even with two big blockers in front of her, freshman Lauren Murphy is not afraid to take those big swings, which is exactly what Jentlin Oldenburg wants her to do on the outside. <laughs> on the slide, first swing and first kill for the freshman Andy Jackson. Beautiful side out from Nebraska. Perfect pass allows Andy Jackson to be run in the middle. She sees the opening with the seam and the block, but it right through. You mentioned Lenny Choboy back in the starting lineup. Suffered that concussion in the uh, collision with Harper Murray. Uh, a couple of games ago, it was Long Beach State. Bump set out, Bork with the swing, with the block again. Wow, is this block showing up here in the first. That's five. Nebraska looking so disciplined up front in their block, making sure to take away those seams. They know Ohio State wants to attack seams in the block. Nebraska is not giving them any. Look out how close that is, that left hand right on the right hand of Harper Murray. Andy Jackson's armpits are above the net on the block. It's a high flyer. Speaking of, there she is again. Coach Cook has talked so much about Andy Jackson and her questioning whether she belonged to play at this level coming into the program, mm. but now being so confident and composed up front. Every single game for the Huskers, she's gotten better and better and more dominant. It was quite the battle in fall camp between Mendelssohn and Jackson, and really the athleticism of Jackson is taking over. It's a good swing in the middle, and the kill there by Raider. 
Jackson's so dynamic as a player. She's always available in transition. She works so hard to get off to be available for her setter. Then defensively, she's very disciplined. She doesn't make movements until she knows exactly where the ball's going. Sarah Sue Morbitzer with the serve. Good pass in system, back row. Merritt Beeson, and wow, Nebraska has been so good on side outs. They're siding out at almost a 90% side out rate right now. That's what Nebraska does. They control the serve and pass battle. They get, do a great job getting their teams out of system on their side. They handle passes so well. If you're, you're having a good night if you side out at 60 to 65%, right? Nebraska right now at 85.7. And looking at their passing numbers, they're passing 57% mm. on the season and holding their opponents to 44. That shows you the, the discrepancy you see between the serve and pass game on Nebraska's side and whoever they're facing. Push it back out to Murphy again. She swings down the line. And it's going to be a point. Net violation called on Nebraska, point for Ohio State. Nebraska getting a little bit aggressive on that block, but Kennedy Orr stepping in, getting a massive dig. Didn't necessarily count because of the net call. Great to see her go in there as a serving yeah. sub and be locked in defensively. She's such a fantastic team player. Came in as the top ranked setter a couple of years ago, has battled knee injuries throughout her career at Nebraska, and really finding a way to contribute here as Nebraska enters the Big Ten Conference season. Beeson again, great up by the freshman Hoffman. Terrific angle, and that's what Londot does well. Caitlin Hoffman allowing that play to unfold, making an incredible dig. Beautiful set, they know exactly where this ball is going to Londot. Nebraska was told earlier today, you've got to block that cross court because Londot can go so sharp. Yeah. That time, Londot's still able to get inside it. Already eight swings, three kills for Emily Londot. Slide, Alec with a little off, it goes off the block and gets the kill. Impressive set from Bergen Riley. She's pulled off the net about eight or ten feet. Becca Alec continues to speed up her approach knowing that she's going to get the ball even when Bergen Riley's off the net. Riley now back to serve. And a kill. That was a tip at the, was that Mia Tuman? It was Tuman, the freshman setter. What Ohio State needs to continue to do is try to control the pace of the net. In those 50-50 ball situations, they have to be as aggressive as possible to try to put the ball down against Nebraska's defense. Becca Alec in the middle. Two kills for Alec. Easy side out for Nebraska. That ball, perfect pass. Bergen Riley is able to find Becca Alec, who is up and available. Harper Murray really controlling the back line. Nebraska as a team right now hitting 500. Not too shabby. Mm -mm. On the slide. Block again. Peyton Norris got a hand on it. Alec was there as well. Ohio State might want to start running things away from that side of the court. The right side where Ali Batenhorst is has been blocked so many times. They need to continue to push it outside. Get Londot the ball. Overpass, free ball opportunity here for Nebraska. Riley runs the quick middle. Good up. Murphy kept it alive. They'll run it again. Got it this time. Bergen Riley has made it a point to get the middles involved. That's something she's been working on all season, is in every situation, allowing those middle blockers to go up and take a really big swing. She's getting them in good spots, and getting the height right for both these hitters, as they're a little bit different in terms of their approach and attack height. 20 to nine, largest lead of set number one. Out of system again, they'll throw one up to Londot, out of system. Beeson gets pulled inside, right into the block. Big block. Looked like Brandewee got a hand on that. First attack error for Nebraska. Brandewee with the block. Emily Londot setting that play up so well, noticing that it was a bit inside. She took that step in, allowing the middle to close. Eloise Brandewee, another freshman starter for the Buckeyes. 
Great recruiting class. Jim Van Oldenburg put together, and there's another block. Thorpe out of Chicago with the big block. Chelsea Thorpe getting involved on this play, lining it up so well, shutting down Allie Batenhorst, watching her reach her hands back into that seam to her middle. Thorpe a transfer from BYU. And the serving area. The serving error perspective, it's been fairly clean for both teams. That's just the second service error on Ohio State. None for Nebraska, plus the two aces. Ohio State, Ohio State might have a bit more service errors than normal because you have to test Nebraska's service. If you have to find a way to get them out of system, you can't hand them lollipops because they'll run it right back at you. Outside, into the block again. There's Batenhorst. Ohio State has got to find a way to keep the ball away from the right side of the court. Get the outsides going. Test that right side blocker or setter. Because Allie Batenhorst is having herself a field day up front. That time Long Duck went high hands. Good decision not firing into the block. Shot the hands and got the kill. Much smarter decision from Londot on the right side. They've been stuffed over there a few times now. This time she adjusts her swing, swings higher at the block's edges rather than down into it. Force with the tip sent right back. Fourth again. All night long, it's been the left side for Nebraska against the right <laughs> side of Ohio State, whether it's defensively, offensively for both, or flipped. It's been a battle up front. That's three blocks for Ohio State in set one. Well, you'd be happy with that until you look across the <laughs> net, you say seven. Seven's normally good for a match for some teams. <laughs> Tried line, but that was wide by Beeson, no touch. Nice little run here for Ohio State late in set one. Well, what a great set by Bergen Riley. Such a smart set at the perfect time for Bergen Riley. She's moving forward. Watch her run forward, but she's able to know those blockers are following her, so she sends it right back from Eric Beeson, knowing there's going to create a one-on-one -on -one situation for her right side. And it's a dime. <laughs> beautiful hands. That, that's what she does best. Her setting location is so insanely accurate. She knows exactly where to put her hitters, knowing where that seam's going to be. That'll be sent back over. Beeson is trying to get her second ace or third ace of the match. Knocked down by Batenhorst. Free ball opportunity though. Back to Batenhorst into the block. Nebraska keeps it alive. And a free ball opportunity now for the Buckeyes. They'll run the middle. Running up by Rodriguez. Back row. Arthur Murray. Oh my. How about the defense for Nebraska getting these fans? We are at set point here in the first. Big swing again out of the back row, and once again, Harper Murray delivers, and Nebraska has taken set one in this battle of top 25 teams. So Bergen Riley starts off set number two. If you're Jen, Jen Flynn Oldenburg, and you know, she told us earlier this week, Nebraska has not been running the middles a lot this year, and so they were really going to focus on you know, their pin defense, and then you look here in set number one, and Nebraska's middles have five kills, seven swings, six blocks, and all of a sudden, they may, they may think game planning a bit differently here for the second. Yeah, it, was, it was interesting to hear Jennifer Nolderberg talk about them not getting their middles involved, because I look at an attack oh, and, <laughs> with defense like that. Wow. So impressive, Harper Murray able to take big swing after big swing. 
Going back to the point on the middles, it, it was interesting to hear Jenta Nuremberg talk about them not setting them as Nebraska rolls up with another ace testing Ohio State serve receive. Look at a player like Andy Jackson, 18 kills over the last two matches. She's certainly being in, getting involved in the offense. Another wet serve. And into the net. Definitely helps when we have two middles, young middles at that, mm. that are doing an impressive job. Andy Jackson hitting 515 on the season. Becca Alec fourth in the country with 1.7 blocks per set. These are two inexperienced, per se, middles, but they're doing a fantastic job stepping up and making a massive impact. Is it going to get over? It doesn't. Point for the Buckeyes, but great hustle into the front row. That's what you'll see from Nebraska. It is big hustle play after big hustle play. Amazing effort on this last play. Lanny Choboy, she does this so often, just running in the stands, no regard for her body. She's willing to leave it all out there. Third service error of the match on the Buckeyes. When you're playing a team that is gritty defensively, the biggest thing that you have to do as an opponent is to try to outlast them defensively. You have to match that energy and effort on your side. Push out to the pin, long dot. Down the line, outside the block, and Beeson again. That is Merritt Beeson's fourth kill on eight swings. Merritt Beeson's doing a fantastic job mixing up her shots. She saw Emily Londa come inside, show that she was going to hit cross, and took it over her shoulder for the line shot. Well, you mentioned Nebraska's two middles and their hitting percentage. Right now, Becca Alec, three kills, five swings, no errors. Andy Jackson, two for two. Between the two of them, they're hitting about 800. And bait horse. Nice up by Hoffman. Right back to Lada. Just wide, and the kill by Beeson goes high off the block and got the friendly ricochet. Ohio State starting to elevate their defense as incredible efforts are happening on both sides. Rallies are getting longer. Ohio State stepping up to extend these rallies even further. Nebraska just able to outlast them. Ah, good block. Tumen at the net. All right, Mia Tumen, yeah. freshman setter up front. That's exactly what you want. If you're up there, you got to find some momentum that can completely change the game. Getting a block from your setter will do that. Well, on the season, Nebraska has held six of their nine opponents to under 100 hitting percentage. The opponent on the year is hitting just 101 against Nebraska. Huskers led that category last year with their lowest ever hitting percentage for an opponent in the history of the program. No programs led that back-to-back -back years, and right now they're holding Ohio State to .029. And there's a look at the leaders' in opponent hitting percentage. Coach Cook preaches defense to this team, and he says it's the strength. Obviously, you look at the numbers. He says defense is based on attitude, effort, and mindset. This team in all of those categories is elite. Little tip in the middle, Andy Jackson. She's three for three. Nebraska mixing up their offense a bit, throwing in a lot of tips against Ohio State's defense that's back on their heels. They're not ready to make that explosive play in front of them or to the side. On the slide. There you go, through the block and the kill by the freshman Eloise Bandewi. One thing Mia Tuman has really been working on is getting her middles involved in the offense. It's been the number one thing connecting with them, especially on this slide. Jensen Nolnberg will be happy about that one going down. Brandewi out of Columbus, Ohio. Bishop Hartley leads the team in total blocks with 21. And 
Tuman with the ace. First for Ohio State. Ohio State now hanging in there, set two after going down in set one, 25-14. That's what you want to see. You want to see fight, fire, finding ways to get Nebraska out of system. Right in the middle. Boom! Andy Jackson. Jackson bringing some heat off of the perfect pass. Bergen Riley will rewarding her for being up and available. So much momentum coming into that play. One of the quickest arm swings that we've seen tonight. Good swing and a kill from that left pin, Thorpe. Two men with an incredible push outside, pulled about 15, 17 feet off the net, uses her strength to push this ball all the way out for Thorpe to put down. Olderberg really likes the shot selection this year of Thorpe. So much better, either not pounding it all the time in the block, making the good shots, going cross court, not afraid to go down the line. Set a nice match, 9 6 here in Nebraska. And these are two of the best in the conference. Two of the best in the conference, two freshmen as well, leading elite programs. You don't just get ranked for a reason. These two setters have been elite for both of their squads. Coming in, so difficult as a freshman to adjust to the game, but starting as a setter, even harder. Pass by Chobler over the shoulder. In system out to Murray for the kill. Harper Murray with such an impressive shot back to the corner. Going right over the block. Watch how high she gets. She doesn't hit this ball necessarily as hard as we've seen, but she knows that corner shot is open. She took a little bit off to place it there. No touch on the swing over the block and wide. And the Buckeyes will take a timeout as Nebraska hitting 368 here in the match to the Bucks 051. Nebraska by five. A couple of national titles, and now it's home to a national power in college volleyball. It's a lot of crossover between uh, football and volleyball these days, huh? <laughs> You're not kidding. Well, you saw all the tweets after the uh, 92,000 show, right? Put a dome over Memorial Stadium and let's just play volleyball there. <laughs> Might as well. Clearly, Husker fans can pack it. Might as well do it night after night. 4-0 run for the Huskers. 12-6 now the lead. Good in system, pushed out to Thorpe. Yeah, great opportunity to save it by Rodriguez, but it, it did hit the floor and the kill for the Buckeyes. Smart shot from Chelsea Thorpe, seeing that this line shot was open, but this ball so close. Rodriguez gets under it, but oh, almost a pancake from Beeson. Back row. Tip right at Thorpe. We'll go to the other side. That time for the back row. Good start and swing by Beeson. You can't give Merritt Beeson an open net. That is exactly what's going to happen. She's going to run it right back at you with all the strength that she has. Kennedy Orr now back in for Nebraska. She will serve. Out of Egan, Minnesota, Egan High School. Starting setter for her high school team when she was in seventh grade. Slide the tip off the block. That's a good decision there by Becca Alec. Whether Nebraska is taking a rip at the ball or putting in off speeds, they're doing such a great job seeing the defense on the other side, where they're set up, putting the ball exactly where they're not. Just long. That one was pretty close to the line. Checking in a serve for Ohio State. Number one, Sarah Sue Morbitzer. This ball is so close to that sideline. 
Just wanted to take another look at it. Sneaking out. Yep. Just wide there as well. Sometimes those serving errors can get con contagious yeah, a bit, Larry. So true. <laughs> you mentioned earlier how that, that Stanford win opened up some eyes. John Cook went into that match not with a lot of confidence. You know, he thought the, the experience of Stanford, you know, Kendall Kip, one of the best of the country, and you know that's a very experienced senior of a team that was ranked in the top five. You're going on the road, and uh, these young competitors on his side of the net really showed him something. It's a daunting task to walk into Stanford at Stanford when they're ranked as a top five team in the country, and you're looking at your team. You got a bunch of freshmen and newcomers yeah. on your side. What Nebraska did so well was play the exact same game that they've been playing all season long. Whether it was against an Omaha or a Long Beach State, they've played the same every match, and it doesn't matter the opponent on the other side. They're so focused on themselves and consistently putting up the same performances. Good defensive reaction there for the Buckeyes. Kept it alive. Back to Murphy or Murray again. And Harper Murray with the kill. Murray able to see that tiny seam in the block and just thread the needle on it. But it's the defense that allows this play to unfold. Bergen Riley getting Harper Murray in a great position. Good hustle from Ohio State, but that free ball, it's tough to defend when you've got players like Harper Murray on the other side. How about this, Nebraska in this set hitting 588. It's not too bad, offense really oh. working out for him. Alec had a couple of opportunities. Londot, line, deep corner, got it. Beautiful shot from Emily Londot. She's pulled into the court, barely even takes a jump at this ball. And what a set this was. Mia Tuman pushing wow. it all the way out for her. Emily Londot not even looking where she's hitting that ball, but just sneaks it right in the corner. That's what makes her so elite, is that shot selection. Quick middle run, Alec delivers. Nebraska's exploiting the gaps in the block so well on their side. They know that Ohio State might be focused on their pins, allowing a lot of seams in the block when they move that middle into those seams. Becca Alex, six kills, no errors, 10 swings. She's hitting 600. Honda a little tight, she was trapped there. Not much she could do. Now off the net, get the touch. No, no touch point, Nebraska. Those are the errors that you're okay with. Emily Londot yeah. going up. Everyone knows she's getting the ball. Nebraska putting up two big blockers in front of her. Just take a big high swing. You're okay, those go out, because you're aiming for hands. Serve is long. Just looking at the numbers for Nebraska, maybe the, the more impressive than even Becca Alex, 600, is Harper Murray, who's getting some out-of-system balls, right? She's swinging from the left side. Seven kills, ten swings, no errors, hitting 700. That's, it's absolutely insane. And you think about an outside in that position hitting 700, no errors. Ugh. Again, they're getting a lot of the junk balls that, you know, a setter is going to throw up and just hope you can do something with. She's finding a way to put it down. Good up by Taylor in the back row. And then right into the block, but a great coverage by Ohio State. And logged on inside delivers. Huge momentum play for Ohio State. That is so important in this match. When you're down as much as Ohio State is, they need these big momentum plays. Caitlin Hoffman, Hoffman getting it out of the block. Great coverage. Londa not afraid to take another big rip inside. Boy, Caitlin Hoffman with the coverage there led to that point. Just fantastic. Jen Van Ongenberg has said she is a playmaker. She's fearless on defense, which is so important in the Big Ten. Off the block. Pushed back over by Brandewee, not down. And I believe two touches called in Nebraska. Double hit called in Nebraska. Point for the Buckeyes. Jenfield Oldenburg making sure her team knows, hey, this is our opportunity to get them. We're only down five right now in this set. Mm. It's doable. We can come back. We just need to play a little bit cleaner down the stretch. Mia Tuman back to serve. The freshman setter. A lot of options up front now for the Buckeyes. Out to Beeson. Goes off the block. Off the hands of Brandewee. 
Nebraska finding ways to side out the pass, doing such great things back there, getting Bergen Riley in system. It's making their offense really difficult to defend, hitting nearly 400 so far in this match. Buckeyes doing a better job, though, on running a few points here in this second set. Nebraska's side out percentage down to 68% now. Crazy, we have to say down to 68%. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Good cover there. Long down into the block. Bait and Horst again. How many blocks does Bait and Horst have? That is six blocks for Ali Bait and Horst. Eight for Nebraska. Well, Ali Bait and Horst might not be having the best offensive night, hitting negative. Her defense wow. has stepped up, scoring so many points for this team. Nebraska leading it here in the second, 20 to 13. The freshman, Harper Murray, with some shots. Hitting 700. First year head coach Matt Rule. Check out the game tomorrow, Larry. I'm excited. I heard that you're going. Uh, you're going to the football game tomorrow, right here in Lincoln. Look, they might not get 92,000, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm pumped to be there. <laughs> they will not get 92,000. I promise. <laughs> It'll be another sellout, though. Good environment. Always is. A swing in the middle. You're in the middle. Great response from Ohio State right out of the timeout. Mm -hmm. Nailing the pass, allowing that middle to get involved, finding ways to score. They got a string together, just a few more from the back line. Emily Londot now. Watch for her in the back row to get set, too. Baton Horse throws it off the block. That's two kills for Allie Baton Horse, and that'll get her out of negative numbers from a hitting percentage perspective. Nebraska's really working this power tip tonight. Seeing the defense on the other side with their amazing court vision, just throwing it right there. Serve is wide. Riley Raider back in the game. Watch for Mia Tooman to get her going up front. Little left-handed punch at it from Harper. Get up by Choboy. Or pushes it over. Choboy chases it down. Off the top of the block, but Choboy again with the defense. Laney Choboy doing it all for Nebraska, laying out for these plays, making them look easy, chasing them down. That one easy dive to her left. Incredible play, and then another one picking up off the power tip. Watch her chase that down. That's what makes her such a good defender. You don't have to be locked into your platform at all times. Libero's there taught independent yeah. hands. You can get this ball up with a palm, with an arm. It doesn't have to be your entire platform together. You can get to a lot more if you're working independently. Joe Boy was the number one ranked bro out of high school. Originally committed to Minnesota. Hugh McCutcheon retires, and... She winds up at Nebraska. So cool that she's staying with this program, even though you're behind one of the best liberos in yeah. the country, and Lexi Rodriguez, who still has another year. Lady Troubley could be the libero at any other yeah. any other program in the entire country, but she chose to stay here. She wants to be a part of this program. She's having a massive impact on the defensive numbers that Nebraska's putting up. Minnesota's thinking they've got a pretty good bro right now. Yeah, they're not that too, <laughs> not too mad about having Kylie Murr up there. Defending. Defensive Player of the Year in the conference. When you think about Sunday's matchup, we got Lexi Rodriguez oh. versus Kylie Murr. I mean, come on. Fantastic. What a dream. Down the line of the kill by BC. Nebraska won the first. 25-14. Set point here in the second. Boy again. Murray. Got it. Harper Murray. More as Baden Horse is kind of a plug and play kind of player. Okay. Lauren Murphy starts it here in the third with the serve. Nebraska on the slide to Becca Alec. Good block touch there for the Buckeyes. And then they run the middle and successful with Riley Rader. 
Fantastic transition play for Ohio State. Their defense getting the ball up to Mia Tooman. Rally Raider up and available in transition. And how about this? First lead of the night for Ohio State. Slide again, they go right back to Alec. Got the touch and the point. Off the hands. Becca Alec, impressive shot, going right at the edges of the block, aiming right for those fingertips to get the tool. Emily Londot nodded her head afterwards when they said, did it, did it get your hand? <laughs> Service error. It's a special young setter right there, Bergen Riley, out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, o O'Gorman High School. She played up on the U.S. national team. They called her into service because setter got hurt. Off the overpass. There's Tooman with the kill. Ohio State's got a pretty good freshman setter of their own. Mia <laughs> Tooman has really stepped into this squad led them so well after the departure of one of the best setters in the Big Ten for the last few years in Mac Pedraza. Yeah, you can tell Jen Flynn Oldenburg really likes her young setter, Mia Tooman. She's known her since she was very young. Of course, Jen was running the A Club program in Pittsburgh as Beeson gets another kill. And so she knew her from those days when she was coaching within that club program, knows the family well. Says the thing she loves about Tooman is her competitiveness competitiveness and always making j laugh, she says, <laughs> right. that at any given time, yeah. Mia's such a goofball and one of those players that everyone wants to be around all the time. She's such a people person, really brings that team together. So her superpower is she competes and is fun to be around. She's fourth in the Big Ten Conference with 9.79 assists per set. She's already had four double-doubles as a freshman. Swickley, PA, North Allegheny High School. That's off the side of the block. Alec with the kill. Bergen Riley is really exploiting those gaps in the block for Ohio State, making her hitters attack in places that are right between them. Watch her, it's not right in front of the setter on a quick. They're moving it into the seam between the outside and the middle. Top of the block, got the hands, did Londot. Pulled inside, all Beeson can do is punch at it. Londot will get another swing from that left pin through the block and got the kill. Emily Londot barreling through it, using her strength to go inside the block. Mara Beeson in a good spot to make this block happen, but watch the strength that Londot brings getting it through. Now Londot back to serve. Number one in the Big Ten Conference of kills per set is Londot. Ooh, another big swing. That is some action from AJ. Andy Jackson unloading on that ball. Fantastic decision to set her off of the perfect pass. Ball's coming over her shoulder. This is so difficult to set the middle in this situation because the ball's coming over. You can't really see where your middle blocker is to get them the ball. That's what makes Bergen Riley so great. She's able to make plays like that. Jackson called for being over the net. Right now, Nebraska's two freshmen, Emily Murray and Jackson combined, 14 kills on 22 swings, no errors, hitting 636. That's exactly what you want to see from your hitters huh. up there. Low error, high efficiency. Freshman doing a great job. Shank pass there by Nebraska. Good bump set by Murray to try to get him a decent swing. And on the other side, out of system as well. This communication on Ohio State side, Mia Tooman setting a ball inside the court, while their right side, Zaria Ragler, coming a bit too far in. Good run in the middle. That was nice and quick. Riley Raider with the kill. Raider felt like she was up there for about five minutes, that hang time, <laughs> so impressive.
you two had a jump to make the set. Raider just hangs in the air before she takes a swing on it. Yeah, she's one of their vocal leaders. High volleyball, volleyball IQs. Playing a little bit of middle and right side. Another one of those. She's kind of been a utility knife. Jim's where she's played. There's another swing and a kill by Harper Murray. Tenth for Murray. Nebraska is exploiting the seams in the block so well, especially on the pins. The middle for Ohio State, whether it's Raider or Brandui, a little bit late to some of these, allowing those seams to happen. Nebraska barreling right through them. Three of Nebraska's hitters right now with no errors. Harper Murray, Becca Alec, Andy Jackson. Harper Murray hitting 667 with 10 kills. And the block, and that's another block. Nebraska's now at nine for the match. Becca Alec made such a smart decision there. She knew where that ball was going, waited on it, then made an explosive play outside rather than waiting and just going straight up, bringing that slide into it. Tough serve by Orr. Well off the net, still a good swing by Londa. Back to Murray. Just why, that's her first hitting error of the night. Nebraska playing very good defense. In the, it's the plays that aren't as flashy that are maybe even more impressive because they make some of those difficult plays look easy. Merritt Beeson took a dig during that play back in the corner. Looked like a routine play, but a lot of liberos don't even make that. There's the first kill of the night for Bergen Riley. Riley not too offensive as a setter. She's gotten a little bit more as the season has gone on, but she picks the exact right time to do it. This ball tight up at the net, even with the blocker in front, she can go inside of them. Good up. in the pit. So after no hitting errors on 17, 16 swings, she now has back to back. Oh my God, hit the panic button, Larry. All right, tell what's happening. <laughs> oh, it's it great up from Lexi Rodriguez. Harper Murray just trying to do a little bit too much with that one, trying to roll it in. block that's an even 10 for the Huskers. Harper Murray this time on the right side of the court. It can be difficult in these rotations when you're not playing your traditional position to go up and still put a big block up. Harper Murray looks so comfortable going right up with Becca Alec. Ohio State Buckeyes, you know, we mentioned four freshmen in the starting lineup, but they've also had an injury to one of their top freshmen, in, you know, Grace Egan, who was hurt earlier this year and is now out. One of the big losses for her, too, yes, she was a yeah. big offensive piece, mm -hmm. but her ball control is what Jen Flynn Oldenburg said we really miss. This is a team that can really struggle in serve and pass sometimes. Grace Egan really brought that to this team, even as just a freshman. Having her out has been really tough for the program. Lost her in the Georgia Tech match, their fourth of the season. Beeson off the block and another kill for Merritt. Beeson able to see the middle. A little bit late to this ball. Londot set it up too far up to the pin. Massive seam for her to hit through. Merritt Beeson started out slow. She was hitting right around 100 through midway through the second. She's all the way up to 412 now. 10 kills, 17 swings. Did not get the touch. First lead this set for Nebraska. Londot still trying to work that high hand shot. We've seen this a lot from her, whether it's right in, into the block, down into it, or trying to attack the edges. Well, this is great. First, uh, first challenge we've had, and we're in the third set. That's a positive sign. That's not too bad. Yeah. Ohio State thinking that there was a touch on this ball. Originally just ruled out of bounds, so they have to have enough evidence to reverse it. See what they come up with. Let's see if we can see a touch on it. it 
Definitely looks like it doesn't touch Merritt Mason, yeah, I think 13 and wide, but maybe Andy Jackson coming through. From that angle, it looks clear over. Yeah, I think if you look at maybe even, oh, here we go. Nope. Maybe net cam too, you know, might be able to show you the trajectory. Like, was it well over the hands or? Gives us something. Oh, that ball looks ball looking clear over Andy Jackson from that angle. Yep. So it's confirmed there was no touch. And that is Tim. We get 11 now for Nebraska. Testing the edges of the block well yep. that time. Even with Andy Jackson coming in a little bit late, Londot identified that early. Still hitting high right at those fingertips. Seven kills now for Emily Londot to lead Ohio State. Also has seven attack errors. She's hitting right at zero. And a service error there. We talked about how, how much success Emily Londot has had against the Huskers both at home and on the road. Her Kill total, she's at 23 against Nebraska, 18, 17, 23. In five matches, she's had 87 kills, almost four per set. So difficult to do, because every year, it's not just this season, Nebraska's putting up some of the best defensive numbers, not just in the conference, but in the country. So to do that against this caliber of team, makes that even more impressive. That swing is long by Harper Murray. And there is her numbers this season leads the Big Ten, 4.86 per set. Londot making that switch from opposite for the last three years for Ohio State to now be outside as the team needed that. And she's in the passing rotation as well, picking, taking up a much bigger load than she's had in the past. Here's Big Horst. Point for Nebraska, two hit violation. Tuman back to the net trying to side set this ball just coming out a little bit wonky. In your conversation with Coach Oldenburg, she was saying it, it, with this team and as young as they are, it always seems like it's it's something new. They're almost going set by set. Like, what do they have to fix? What are they doing well? What do they have to work on? It's definitely a young team and a work in progress, but you can see the talent is there on the Buckeye campus. With a three and six start, Jen Van Lundenberg said, you know, it, it's of course frustrating, but this team is still so motivated. The youth is still getting better, and they've been very close to making that switch and making that turn so far in the season. And yes, every set she said is new, but they have to be creative with some lineups, who they have available that night, who they're seeing on the other side, what blocking matchups they want. What's impressive about this team is even in those different lineups, they've been able to step up and not question it, go out and play hard. Yeah. You know, you look at their record and you see three and six, they're still ranked 21st in the nation, but that schedule has just been remarkable. They've played now, this is the seventh consecutive ranked opponent that they have played. Four of those seven are ranked in the top ten. Third set here, Nebraska has a 2-0 lead and looking for the home sweep. They lead it by two. 11. They added 402 new seats here this year. So when you add 402 new seats, you're you get in the Big Ten Conference, some of these high profile matches, you're gonna continue to set records and they set another one. Tipped off the block. Coverage provided by Orr. There's Beeson out of the back row, right on the line. Boy, that's a target practice there. That's a sharp one from Eric Beeson in the back row. 
Normally, back row attacks go to the meat of the court in the middle. She's testing those edges going right on the sideline. The block on the slot, Alec. No touch, and that was just did not get on top of it. Miss hit. And that ball a little bit too low for Becca Alec on the slide. Alec is such an explosive slide attacker. She chases it down and gets on top of it. If that ball isn't high enough, it mm. becomes difficult to keep it in play. First hitting error of the night for Becca Alec. And she's still hitting 467, eight kills. Overpass, and got the kill. Good swing on the overpass by Raider. Smart from Raider, being aggressive up front with Bergen Riley up there. She knows that she can take a big swing. Ohio State right now hitting 104 in the match. Nebraska 359. Lauren Murphy with the serve. Steps in to bump set. Round out with another swing. Great up by Beeson. Harper is long, no touch point for the Buckeyes. Great defense there for Ohio State, and they are going to say a touch now. So the officials talked about it, saw the touch, and Jen Flynn Oldenburg is going to challenge. That transition play just so impressive. Beeson just sticks an arm out. Lexi Rodriguez. Gets Harper Murray in the perfect spot to make the play. Rodriguez also knows her body's in the way, so she makes sure to get out Murray's way. Oh, I did not think there was a touch there. Wasn't sure there was a touch either. Harper Murray looked like she was clear over yeah. Mia Tuman. This initially called a touch, so they have to have evidence saying that it isn't. Definitely not seeing a yeah. touch there. Yeah. This might be a successful challenge for Ohio State and Jen Flynn Oldenburg. She only has this one challenge remaining, so yeah. if they don't get it, she burns that, she'll be out unless they do go to a fifth set where you get the additional one. Get a few more looks at it. Does it clip a finger? Mm. This might be our best yeah, angle. Best and look, yeah. There's definitely no finger bent backwards. Nope. I always like in Devaney, they play Let It Be during the challenges. <laughs> Did a nice Beatles fix Beatles for the night. Beatles fan, yeah, there you go. All right, here's the call. It was out, no touch point for Ohio State. So a successful challenge for Jen Flynn Oldenburg. She and we're not at a 16. That. Yeah, she keeps that challenge yeah. now, so important to have as this game very tight. Ohio State back in the match. So Lauren Murphy, the freshman of Round Rock, Texas, back to serve. Level right back to her again, into the block. Back row, Beeson, off the side of the block. Big coverage from Nebraska. Lady Choivo getting this ball high enough so Bergen Riley can get under it and have all options available. That's what you want to do when you're covering your hitters. Not just get the ball up if you can, but get it high enough so your setter can get under it. Jen had a flashback there to the late 90s. Did you see her take that, uh, <laughs> take that first touch from out of bounds? Put it up right up to me. Right. Swing and a kill there by Emily Londot, even at 17. Londot continuing to power this team, using her strength up front. Still clawing her way out of this game, but using a lot of power to get up and over Becca Alec. Ragnar now in the serve. And go after Harper Murray, who handles the pass well, and Beeson cleans it up in system. 
just trading points at this point. Yeah. Both teams going back there. No one going on runs, which can be so important late in sets. Only got to win by two. 13 kills now for Beeson. She's hitting right at 500. At one point she had four kills, three errors. Now she has 13 kills, still at three errors. On the slide, into the block. Allie Badenhorst for her seventh of the night on the outside, shutting down all the right side attackers for Ohio State, whether it's an opposite or a slide. Tracking this so well, getting in front, diving back into the seam, so important. You get a sense this is a big point right here for Ohio State, right? This is a massive momentum point. 19-7, Nebraska up by two. My guess is if they don't win this point, it's going to be a timeout, but they do. That's a big help there for the Buckeyes. Momentum is so important late in sets. If you can just change one or two points, that could be the set for you. Zaria Ragler into the game. Rodriguez with the cover. And Beeson from off the net over the block. A little pace to it as it drops in. Smart decision from Riley. Everything's happening on the left side of Nebraska's court. She sends this ball all the way back using her strength, her hands to get Beeson the ball on the right side. with a great dig. Oh, what a great decision by the freshman. Andy Jackson with her sixth kill. Jackson starting to turn the tide for Nebraska. Pull away now up three. Andy Jackson, a wall up front. Nebraska getting out of some questionable situations. She just puts this ball right back on Ohio State side. So a timeout taken by Jen Flynn Oldenburg, where we talked about their schedule to start this season and seven consecutive ranked opponents. She chatted about that schedule. In, in terms of the Big Ten, I think once we get there, we're just rolling already. And, and that's, you know, twofold. It's the experience that I've played in the Big Ten. Now it's my fourth year coaching the Big Ten but also the, the pre-conference schedule that we put together. Like we want to be prepared for Big Ten play and, and playing some of the top teams in the country in pre-conference will get us ready for that. Well, I don't know how a schedule like this could not get you ready. I mean, six matches in a row now, seven against ranked opponents, five against top 12s. They've been on the road. Seven out of nine games on the road. Huh. And she said that was so important because in the Big Ten, yeah. we have to be good on the road. They have an awesome arena with the Cavelli Center, but it's so difficult to win on the road in these massive environments. Playing in front of 8,500 plus people in Lincoln, Nebraska, yeah. they wanted to test themselves early on in non-conference play on the road to be good. Whether or not they got those wins, they were in those games. Only one of those six losses did they get swept in. And here's the schedule upcoming. So they open the season with Nebraska on the road and then at number one, Wisconsin on Wednesday. In between that, they squeeze in the Hawkeyes. But what an opening three games for the Buckeyes. Oh, it's a difficult schedule. You look at that Iowa team, some people might sleep on. They took Minnesota to five last night, a very good Minnesota team. Short serve there by Rodriguez, out of system. Overpass, sent back over. Rodriguez will set. At the top of the block, and there's a good kill by Ragnar. That's a big play for Zaria Ragler up front, going up and over the block, hitting a smart high shot. That's exactly what Ohio State needs to continue to do at the edges of the block or over. Zaria Ragler, just a sophomore out of Maryland, Arundel High School, getting some action here in set number three. Great serve and an ace. That's a big one by Londot. 
Momentum is key late in sets as Ohio State is trying to claw their way back. Down 0-2, Londot hits a bullet right into the seam, a perfectly placed ball. Nebraska just up one, but Ohio State. Fighting Shondells with the win over Maryland. Michigan, Michigan State. State with the sweep over Michigan. How about that? Big one yeah. over Michigan. Michigan State looking better than ever this year. No touch there. Swing is long. Nebraska back up by two. Now in the red zone of play, both teams, the focus is playing as clean as possible, especially mm. if you're Ohio State down two. You got to get the next five points. Good pass there by Londot on a very tough serve. And now Londot from off the net is just wide. Nebraska inching closer and closer. Ohio State needs an answer from their serve receive. Children of the corn out strong tonight <laughs> as they lead at 23-20. Some highlights from all the volleyball action around the conference tonight. Now the Huskers trying to complete the sweep and go to 10-0 late here in the third. Officer puts him out of system, bump set. Big with the angle just long. Big horse keeping Ohio State in this game. This serves so important back there from Caitlin Hoffman. John Cook's going to challenge. He's going to challenge whether that was in or out on that back line. And I think he had some fans on the far side were saying might have been in or maybe even a touch. Well, they'll, they'll look at both, right, Emily? I mean, in the replay, they'll look for not only a touch, but also whether it was in or out of the back. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Baton Horse definitely looked like she hit this ball definitely high. I'm just not yeah. sure if it clipped someone's hands. And also the in and out. A little tough to tell. Was there a touch? I don't think there was a touch. It was well above the block, so didn't see the touch. Yeah. yeah our line judge is right on top of it. I think this is probably going to stand. Yeah, it's pretty tough to tell whether any part of that ball clipped the back line or whether there was a touch. Well, they must have heard you say how much you like the Beatles song because now right. they're not playing it. They switched it up. What the heck, guys? <laughs> I'm here more often than home and you can't give me the Beatles again? What are we doing? Now, for Husker fans, they're probably not going to hear something good here. My guess is it's going to stand. Yeah, point of Ohio State. So it will stay 23-21. Off and back to serve for the Buckeyes. Short serve, ooh. Boy, that could have been so good. It just missed. Smart decision, not as good execution. Yeah. Match point upcoming for the Huskers. The Huskers open up the Big Ten Conference season with a home sweep against a top 25 opponent in Ohio State and Nebraska. <laughs>
जान तुरैया दिवी आसुआ बह दिलवारो जान तुरैया दिवी आसुआ बह दिलवारो हमर यकिया से 